Welcome back to Dishonored 2. At the end of the last episode, uh, I was trying to decide what to do about this mess that I've created out here. Um, I'm a little concerned about the civilian. And I'm wondering if I'm going to be blamed for this civilian's death. Um, I mean, she was going to die anyway. They were going to shoot her dead. But I saved her life, and then somehow she ended up dead. Uh, but I think that... Uh, there's really nothing I could do about it now. I don't think I have my save game anymore. Um, I mean, I think it's gone. Uh, no, there's the quick save right there. Um, although I think this is a different quick save. Because I think I must have quick saved again after I uh, saved them. So I don't think I could go back even if I wanted to. So this is the world that I am living in. Uh, with a bunch of overseers lying about here unconscious uh, bodies lying here and um, I'm just gonna leave them here I'm not gonna mess with them I don't feel like going to the trouble of um, moving them somewhere yeah, interesting wolf hound um, not sure what that says right there hunter wolf hound hunter maybe anyway that's for transporting wolfhounds, maybe. So, <laughs> this place, there's so many places to go. Um, including the Overseer Outpost right here. That is like our main uh, objective at the moment. So, I think that that's what we're going to try to do. At least at the beginning of this episode. Uh, you hear somebody talking here. There's a dude sitting in there. And... Um, there must be another dude in there because I see a sword like moving around unless he's like working on that. Is it? Okay. Well, I don't know what's up with that sword there that's kind of floating. That's weird. Um, but I don't think that there's any people in the entrance to this place, which is kind of surprising. Well, there's a guy at the top of the stairs there. So, um... And there's the dude there, and there's the floating sword. <laughs> is there somebody invisible in there? What the hell's going on? That is weird. Man, I really don't know the best way to go in here. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm really worried that guy's going to see me. I'm going to try to fast. Oh, oh, damn it. Oh, crap. Okay. That is not what I meant to do, but it actually worked out pretty well. That was a case of my right mouse button not staying engaged as long as I wanted it to. I was going to try to hop up on what I thought was a ledge right there, um, but I missed it. However, it seems like that worked out fine. So I think we're okay. Now, I'm pretty sure there's somebody walking around in this room right here that we're going to have to deal with. Let's see where he is. Oh, what the hell? Oh, there's a guy sleeping. Okay, there's a dude walking around, and then there's a couple guys sleeping. Okay, I didn't know there were guys sleeping in there. Boy, he sure does whistle loud. Uh, I'm also wondering if I get closer, if it's going to trigger, you know, a conversation, which will, you know, cause these guys to change their... their pattern... Oh, great. Is that locked from the inside going to stay there? I've had this happen before. Where um, that message stayed on the screen, and it looks like... Crap. It looks like that's what's happening here. I just... Um, I just saved it a moment ago on these stairs. Let's just reload the save. Get that message off the screen. Okay. I don't think I need to open that window anyway, because weren't there bars out there anyway? Yeah, okay. Labor that is rigorous, squeezes the muscles as a sponge, rinsing impurities from the mind and body. What are you talking about, dude? Oh, jeez, okay. Interesting. So he walks around out here? Am I being presumptuous? Hoping to cross paths with that monstrous assassin? Hmm... Hmm. Stream of untruth. 
Maybe he is just walking in a pattern. What would happen if I put a stun mine down here? Voice of the outsider. <laughs> I don't know. It was probably a dumb idea. Let's see if he walks around there. Gets stunned. Um, the thing is, I don't know if other people will hear it happen if it if he gets stunned by it. Um, but now, of course, he's just like standing there. But I think he's gonna move again. Yeah, here he goes. Now he's gonna walk over here. Oh, he sure did make a lot of noise, but those people sleeping sure didn't, didn't seem to care at all about that. Okay, so one dude's stunned. I know this thing has more than one stun in it. I don't know how many, though. Let's, um, pick this guy up. I'm not sure where to put him right now, though. We're just gonna kind of put him right here for the time being. Whoa, what was that? What? Was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> I threw him right into the damn window. Did you hear that? Okay, well, I got a couple of, uh, stuns there. You're not supposed to be here. You're not supposed to be here. Okay, now they're shooting at me. Okay, well, that's not really how that was supposed to happen. <laughs> that is not how that was supposed to go. Um, <laughs> well, here's this dog that I laid out here before. <laughs> okay, well, um, the good thing... I can't open that window. The good thing is that uh, I was able to use my stun mine to its greatest potential. I don't, I don't remember whether it stuns two or three people. I think maybe it stuns three people. Because I think I saw it stun two more people. Unfortunately, there's more than two people running around in there. There were the two guys asleep. And, um... Another guy standing around the corner. I don't see any of their... bodies here. Or any of their... Where are they? Okay, there's a dude down there. Can I get on top of this? It's kind of next like I can't. There we go. Okay, we got this guy down here. I will find you, you know. Yeah, but not if I find you first. Haha. Uh -huh. I found you first. Eh, let's just deposit him out here somewhere. Oh, this is like a good spot. I'm gonna knock them all out anyway. Who cares if they see? Okay, now is there anybody left conscious upstairs? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if we can see. I think there has to be, right? Come out wherever you Oh, son you of a are. gun! Oh, he's gonna shoot me! I hmm. Okay, well. That's certainly not how I wanted things to go. That's not, natural. That's not natural, he says. Where'd he go? What's going on forever? Where did he go? Where are you, dude? <clears throat> oh. Oh no, I am. I don't stand a chance anyway. I should really just give myself up, shouldn't I? I don't stand a chance. There he goes. Uh. He's pretty mad. He's probably pretty frustrated. Come on, I don't have time for games. And he doesn't have time for games. Now see, that sounds like somebody over here talking. Um, but he's over there. So that makes me wonder if there's still another person around here. I don't think there is. There he goes. Okay. Was well, he going back on his uh, his beat again? Probably gonna see me before I see him, just like last time. Where is he? Crap, man, I'm not seeing him at all. Where is this guy? Where did he go? 
I hear him now. Wait a minute. Do I see somebody downstairs? Is he downstairs now? <laughs> Where are you, dude? Oh, I got a key. Next time. It's no use. Next time, he says. Okay, there's a guy there. And uh, this guy might be coming up these stairs here, maybe. I hear walking. <laughs> Where is this guy, man? I want to be ready for him. So that stun mine did a really nice job. Wow. No sign of this guy anywhere. I don't think that guy over there is the same guy that was walking around. I don't think so. And those guys up there don't seem to care about what's going on down here. Where the hell is he? Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay. Hmm. Great. Is he just going to stand there now? Because I don't know how to get behind him. From there. Huh. That kind of sucks. Well, nothing says we can't look around in here. But I really don't want to look around until I've taken everybody out. So let's, let's just get to work taking everybody out. Do you think if I took this guy and I put him on the bed... I mean, he's just asleep. You know, is that suspicious? He was already in here asleep anyway. And where did the other guys go? That stun mine took out at least three dudes. Where are the other bodies? Where'd they go? That's what I want to know. This is one of those good taps that gives you some... gives you a lot of health and mana. Uh, I'm a little worried about um, what happened to these bodies that should be here. There should be three bodies lying here. But they're uh, not here now, so I'm wondering if the game is considering them dead. Okay, here's one. But I don't think this is one of the guys that was looted, was it? Uh, not looted, um, stunned. How did he end up way over there, if that's the case? So yeah, there should be a third body around here somewhere. Well, there's... Somebody's mask. So this guy's walking around the records room over there. Holy crap, he's gonna come out. I wasn't expecting him to do that. Actually, if I go down these stairs, I might be able to get behind this guy. Yeah, this might work. Is there a basement in this place? No, it doesn't look like it. There he is. Well, let's go say hi. Let's give him a hug. He looks lonely. Where shall we put him? It doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm taking everybody out. It doesn't matter. Let's we'll leave him laying right there. Let's see if there's any goodies for us here. The ancient music excerpt from a longer work. Throughout the natural world, there are ripples that we can barely perceive with our senses. An ancient music permeating everything as fundamental structural rule. Through it, you can work wonders without violating the natural world or begging favors from unfriendly spirits. Throughout my studies, I have found a 17-note scale derived from this phenomenon, and with the right equipment, the, those notes allow for astonishing effects. Not the least of these is the ability to calm the turbulence originating in the void which we attribute to the outsider. Okay. Anything else? Anything? No? There's just bullets lying around everywhere.
Now we have that guy up there in that records room to take care of. See if there's anything else in here for us. Doesn't look like it. This guy though... Okay, it's just... That hat on his head there. That helmet. Uh, there's a desk over here. I thought I had a coin on it, but I guess it doesn't. And there's a note. Detainee Durante. Interesting. This is the guy we're looking for. Oh, detain detainee was a man called Durante. He admitted entering the home of Aramis Stilton on occasion, but died before revealing how he came in possession of the Jindosh lock combination. Detainee is of no further use to us. His possessions have been passed on to Vice Overseer Byrne for inspection upstairs in his office. Brother Tennis has disposed of the detainee's body. Well, there you go. So much for finding uh, Durante, but we can find his items still. And I guess this is where he was. This is where the detainee was. He's got uh, selected sayings of the Overseer here. That was the reading material they provided to this poor guy. This place looks like a horrible place to be. Let not the eyes linger upon pretty things. Better to pluck them out than to rest them long on temptations. One heretical thought leads inevitably to more as a single errant weed soon overtakes the field of wheat. Know this, there is only one path. It is the job of the outsider to convince you there are many. The duty of the tongue is to speak the seven strictures. All else is heresy. Burn the non-believers from your midst, for they are a blight upon the earth. These are among the guises of the outsider. The orphan with outstretched hand, the strumpet with luscious words, the scholar with copious tomes. The heretic cannot be redeemed except by oil and flame. Beware the starving hordes, for they hunger for more than sustenance. In spirit they are destitute, in judgment they are lacking. Live in silence, for a single untruth or misspoken word can lead to ruin many times its magnitude. Do not accept to the invitation of the outsider. The drink he offers is poison, and on his hearth, death simmers. Hearth, hearth, I don't know. We may have read that already. Some of it sounded familiar. I remember thinking that uh, apparently the overseers do not um, help the, the needy. To them, the needy, you know, the orphan with the outstretched hand, that's, that's the, uh, the outsider. Okay, uh, let's go back up these stairs. This bone charm is out there. We'll get it. And then we got this dude here. Okay, there he was. I just saw him. He's just standing outside the the room there. We need, we need to go take care of this guy. Nice. I'll just leave him here on the ground. What do we got? Uh, some coins? Litany on the White Cliff. Um, we may have read this one already. Excerpt from a series of overseer invocations by High Overseer Abram Templeton. Yeah, we read this one already. I remember it. What else is in here? Well, there is a note called contraband here. I've acquired more forbidden articles from the street people nearby and need to lock it away in the confiscation room. When Overseer Stelos awakens from his rest, have him bring me the key, Brother Penn. Well, we got the key. We have it, I think. We picked up a key from one of those people that we stunned. Is there a book over there? Looks like there's a book on a shelf. Oh, this is a room that I didn't notice. The bathroom here. Uh, the ancient music. Well, there it is again. Huh, okay. Weird. It's the uh, same book found twice in the same building. 
Hmm, there's apparently a vial in here. Huh, okay. Kind of fell down in there, maybe. Um, okay. It's boiling. Okay, there's a heater here. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a note. It's not. Oh, it's just part of that plant going through the door there. Here, in this metal crate, is a rewire tool, which we do not need. Some silver ingots, whoops, and a rune. And now we have another rune. Piece of artwork there that I can't seem to take with me. Um, here is raw whalebone, and some bottles that I can't seem to interact with, that's weird. There you have it. That's what's in that room. But we still haven't found what we came here for. According to our quests, we need to find Durante's items. Durante's possessions have been sent to Vice Overseer Burns' office for inspection. Finding them may lead you to the solution to the Jindosh lock. Uh, you overheard a conversation indicating that Vice Overseer Burn is upstairs in his office. And there's the key that we just used just now. Well, um, it does not appear as though there are stairs that go up to the third floor. Uh, however, there are stairs that go up to the third floor. What the hell am I thinking? There's stairs right here. Private, it says. This is private. Well, it's not going to stop me from coming up. Oh, well, there's even another floor, it seems. So where are those dudes that were praying? Are they on this floor? Oh, yep. There's somebody walking around in there. So we got this guy walking around. We've got maybe somebody sleeping over there. Oh, there's a guy right there. <laughs> I totally did not see that dude, man. Okay, this guy's walking in this direction. Can he come out here? Okay, he's over there now. Okay, he might be easy to get. We just have to wait till he walks back over there. It's funny, there's like a, a bottle of something up there. What else? Is there any other people walking around in here? Okay, he's going to walk in that direction now. Man, this guy was rich. He had 30 coins on him. I'm just going to choke this guy out while that guy lies there sleeping. <laughs> huh, why is this place in such bad shape? Why is it all torn up? I don't know. Well, dude, I'm sorry, but uh, there's stuff on the couch, so I'm just going to have to flop you on the floor here. Really, I'm sorry about that. I was looking for someplace more comfortable for you, but um, it's kind of kind of messy in here. Grab me some copper wire. Okay. So we got this guy in here. And, um, he seems to be very interested in whatever's going on over here. So we'll just go ahead and take him out. Really not very good security in here, I gotta say. Really not. I mean, there's really one way to get in here. Well, two ways. You got the elevator and you got the stairs. So when you position somebody right here, 
I guess maybe they were thinking that the guys downstairs were gonna keep people from getting in. I don't know. All right, two down. Um, can I take care of the sleeping guy? Oh, this guy's dead. Huh. Well, I mean, I hope I didn't somehow cause his death. Huh. Just a dead overseer lying there. Okay. Ooh, and a sleep dart there. Interesting. What the hell's going on in here? It's kind of strange, right? Here is Book of the Fallen. Inscribed here are the names of the Abbey faithful who have fallen, waging war against the heretic Palo in the contest for the heart and soul of this district. No, I am not going to read all those names. Lots of Russells, though. That was weird. Don't know why that door flung open and then shut again quickly. What? No! Ow! Oh, darn it! Ow! Oh. All right, hold on. I'm going to uh, reload my last safe because I I want to hear what they're saying. And I guess I accidentally hit that ashtray there and made a noise. So really the only thing over here is this uh, book that we already looked at. So yeah, I wanted to hear this conversation. Maybe I could hear it from here. I can't hear it. Injuries, and somehow he comes back the next day to fight again. Whatever witchcraft he has, even the ancient music is ineffective. I believe Paolo is in possession of some unclean artifact. Burn. It's my fear that he has to be killed twice in one day. And the Duke won't help. Duke is no friend of ours. He exiled me from the Grand Palace, and he's done everything possible to push the Abbey of the Everyman out of Sir Konos. The look on his face when he dismissed me from court. There's something wrong with people who live in palaces for too long. Hmm. So they are not friends with the Duke. Does that make them our friends? Not really. Are you guys done talking? Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Okay, let's, um... Oh, jeez. Someone there. I was way too slow getting away from there. Way too slow. That was really dumb of me. Let's see where this guy ends up going. Somehow we know where he's going to go before he knows where he's going to go. But it's a pretty neat ability. Okay, he walks there. Oh, now he's going to walk that way. Where are you going, dude? Come with me. He had 30 coins on him, too. Oh, good. That door shut so that uh, Burn won't see us. We'll go ahead and put him on the pile. Plop. <laughs> Alright. What's going on in here? goodies in here for us? Oh, here's a book. Every Man's Face. This one does not sound familiar. On making the masks, heat the metal to pouring temperature, then speak the words of John Clavering. Behold the face of Holger, who fell in battle this day. It is the picture of outrage at the conditions of this loathsome world and so pour into the mold derived from the original drawing in black ink on calfskin parchment 
the face which kept its beauty even in death. Pour the metal with care, with full awareness of what you bring into these lands. If the metal splatters, or if it is improperly measured, then be assured the outsider is present and all must be purified, and the process started anew. Let the masks come to a cool temperature, then remove them from the molds and speak thusly from the tome of objects. Holger the pure, whose face is preserved herein for us across the ages, strike fear into our enemies and dread into all sinners, so may it be. Set aside any in which a brother misspeak, or in which, even if seeming an accident, a mask is dropped, or any imperfection is detected. Melt these down and repurify the liquid metal. All such masks must be perfect in form, imbued with the conviction of the Abbey. Yeah, sounds like quite the process. Got a little workshop in here. Apparently this is where they uh, make the masks. I don't know where they heat the, um, you know, they melt the metal though. Maybe this isn't where they make them. I don't know. Uh, stone mine. Cool. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. I love it when I use something and then I find it right away. A uh, book of sermons. A uh, sermon for a mid-hearth eve. Pious Sir Conans and my righteous brothers from the Abbey welcome all. We are being tested in these times, tested by the outsider. He searches daily for weakness, for fear. And what form this test? blood flies, biting vermin that are the very representation of our moral decay or corrupted spirits. Minions of the outsider escape from the void, and all the while he laughs. Each infestation brings him ecstasy, each death a victory for him, a battle won in his endless war against our steadfastness. But he needs an ally in our world. Where does the outsider find these traitors? In those places most downtrodden, Crumbling buildings, stinking whorehouses, and filthy back alleys where fishmongers toss the innards of their catch. In the sewers where mudlarks collect dropped trinkets among putrid human waste. And in alehouses. Trust not these dark places and their denizens. The mark of the outsider is upon them. Let us now contemplate the strictures as we listen to the hymn, Corruption at My Heels, I Hasten Away. <laughs> Great stuff. It's like more bullets over there. So these uh, outsiders, ow, I keep calling them outsiders. These uh, overseers are quick to use bullets. Pistols, bullets lying everywhere. Okay. What else we got around here? Privates. Oh, okay, this goes all the way into the overseer's office, it looks like. I wonder if he's still sitting at his desk. Oh, look, there's a projector there, interesting. Huh. Well, I'm thinking we'd probably take him out pretty easily so long as he keeps facing that direction. Hey, dude. How's it going? <coughs> well, that was very easy. Okay. Knocked him out. So now we've knocked out both the leader of the Howlers and the leader of the um, Overseers. <laughs> okay, he looks very comfortable. <laughs> we'll just... Oh, man. Okay, good. Thought that message was going to stay there again. Oh, just in time for a storm. Oh, some dust might blow in here, dude. Sorry. Whoa! <laughs> we have two dudes over here. I forgot about them. Well... Um, we should probably take care of them and 
I'm gonna say this is a perfect, uh, perfect, um, situation for using Domino. So we're gonna go ahead and take these guys out. I'm thinking I probably could have taken them out one at a time without even needing to use my uh, domino, but that's okay. Batista District. Stilton Renovation Plan. Okay. Alright, well, it's a renovation plan. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that, but it's interesting. What would be really cool is that if I stood up in front of this, my shadow appeared in front of it, but it doesn't. It's kind of disappointing. But oh well. Is that a newspaper there that I missed? I guess I didn't really look around in this room yet, did I? Let's look around in here. Um, yeah, this is the office. Well, we'll look around in here first, because the office is probably the last place that we should look, because that's where we're going to find information uh, from that Durante guy, probably, right? Nothing to read on the board there. Just a uh, newspaper here. Curator Ashworth reported missing. In a statement from the Grand Palace, authorities have announced that an investigation is underway related to the disappearance of Brianna Ashworth, curator of the Royal Conservatory. Insiders say that the conservatory is currently unmanaged and that the building itself is in a worrying state of disarray. One can only speculate about what recently happened there and about the whereabouts of the curator. Ashworth's disappearance is a tremendous loss for the institution. She is said in connoisseur circles to have a keen eye for unusual works of art and rare pieces of historical engineering. She is also well regarded as a taxidermist, enabling the citizens of Karnaka to behold rare wonders of nature from up close. That's a shame. That's a shame. Okay. So that's what's going on in this room. Now let's uh, look around in here. The Southern Winds by Caleb Manley, Natural Philosopher. That's what this guy's reading? Um... The Southern Winds presented at the Academy for the Benefit and Moral Edification of the Pupils Therein, <laughs> excerpt from a speech. Cherished students and learned colleagues, have you not heard the tales of Serconus and the beauty of its people? I pose questions today that I hope to answer in great detail. Let's start with the ones commonly asked by travelers for many decades. Does the warmer clime affect the spiritual outlook of a people? Are those born in Tivia, Morley, and Gristol possessed of a more taciturn nature through the geographic and meteorological conditions of their birth? And are these subjects influenced by the obscure currents of warmer water and air that are channeled across the dreadful ocean from the Pandician continent itself? We know so little about that far land. In my travels, I have been impressed with the commonality shared across all cultures, but also in the differences. It's my goal to illuminate these areas of inquiry, and I will share at least one spicy Serconan recipe with you before the day is done. Caleb Manley, Natural Philosopher. That's the book they decided to put on his uh, desk? Which surprises me. So, um, where's Durante's stuff? More bullets. Well, there's another floor up there, so I'm going to guess that that's where I need to go. What is that? Huh. Well, I don't know what that is. Kind of looks like a piece of paper. Huh. I don't know. But it doesn't look like there's anything else here. Except for this, maybe. Good lord. Here's Durante's key. Uh, here's a bone charm. This one's called Healthy Appetite. Let's check it out. Healthy Appetite. Food restores more health. Eh, it might be good to have. 
One of these days I'll look through my bone charms and do more combining, but not right now. Vice Overseer's report. The Howler detainee downstairs gave us key details pertaining to his criminal associates and their heretical leader, Palo. Debauchery at all hours and acts of certain witchcraft, the likes of which even our sacred music cannot dispel. Palo is every bit as vile and corrupt as we suspected. With his dying breath, the detainee revealed that the Duke himself has Palo sending food into the barred and shuttered home of Aramis Stilton. Really? The place is kept secure by the so-called Jindosh Lock. No doubt the Duke obtained the lock combination from Jindosh and Palo passed it to the detainee. The weave of corruption is endless. So now we need to enter. Oh, 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 we came here to get the key. Okay. And uh, now we need to go back to Durante's office, use Durante's key to enter his room. It's probably somewhere in the Crone's Hand Saloon. I know exactly where it is. Uh, here, this is funny. Um, I can't do this anymore because I knocked both of them out. <laughs> so uh, I, I wasn't thinking about that when I knocked him out. Uh, truth, truth be told, I was pretty much planning on doing it this way anyway basically not choosing sides um so that's cool it all turned out the way i planned it anyway okay um but it looks like there's still more exploring to do there's something i mean there's definitely an upstairs to this place don't know if anybody's walking around up there but we're gonna go find out That elevator is under construction or something. Or under repair. So, looks like they're not using this floor. Interesting. Are there any more runes or bone charms? Oh, there are. There's one down there. There's one over there. And uh, I guess that's all of them. That's all I'm seeing show up. Okay. Just wanted to know. Well, let's look around here and see if there's anything interesting for us to read or take. just to make a bunch of noise. It's just way easier to use this ability to uh, find things. Right? I mean, otherwise I wouldn't have seen this coin or these coins. Uh, meeting, let's see, Shindere Peak Miners Family Committee. Meeting every fourth day, 9 p.m. West Cape Hotel asks for Lucia Pastor. Pretty sure we already read that. So I'm guessing that this is really a place that used to be used by the miners, but then the overseers came in here and kind of commandeered it. Well, that's pretty much all there is up here. It would seem. That is uh, the overseer's office right down there. Talk on it. Um, can I still use the heart on this guy? Even though he's asleep? That's why I said to him. The youngest man to reach vice overseer in decades. Oh yeah? So he was a vice overseer. He has moved up quickly in the Abbey's hierarchy. He might be a high overseer someday. Not if I kill him right now, but I'm not going to.
Is that so? So yeah, he sounds kind of paranoid to me. Oh, I don't want to carry him. Of course. Something nags at him beyond the usual worries. He will consult the sisters of the Oracular Order, and they will set his feet on the right path. His father taught him to read using letters carved into handcrafted wooden blocks. He seeks to weed out the witches and the heretics, those who have succumbed to the lure of the void and to bring chaos where they tread. But it's okay for him to talk to the sisters of the Oracular Order. They're not witches, I guess, huh? And it was a boy, turned in by his mother for his restless hands. He extracted a confession as he would from anyone else. It would jeopardize his ascent of his overseer to do otherwise. His mother encouraged his musical talent, but his interests lay in the comfort of the strictures and the rigors of the abbey. He has seen a troubling increase in superstitious beliefs and the use of charms and spells. He waits for guidance from the oracular order. Once a week, he meets an old friend of his mother's for dinner at a cafe at the edge of town. He listens to her stories again and again with great patience. When his years in Karnaka come to an end, he hopes to move to the capital. In Dunwall, he will have the ear of the high overseer himself. Before they took him away for the trials of aptitude, the overseers in Freeport watched him for months, debating his promise. You want me to point the way, help you onto a path. Now, <laughs> let us be lost here together for a moment. Okay. I revealed his secrets. Ask me no more. I will ask you no more. It's a long way up here. Bone charm over there. Um, there's another one somewhere. I can't quite see it right now. Bone charm here. Bone charm there. Oh, don't fall off, dude. Don't fall off. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. The bone charm in that direction. So what we're supposed to do now is we're supposed to go back to Durante's office. And um, I don't think we ever did get a map of this place, did we? Never did. Never did get a map of this place. So I don't know if one doesn't exist or if I just have never found it. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Just a little picture sitting there. So, I guess that's it for this place. So we can safely leave here. Um, can we? Yeah, pretty much. I searched this area pretty good, didn't I? I think I did. 
I still don't know what happened to the third guy that I stunned, though. Uh, maybe, maybe this stun mine only stunned two people. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I could have swore I saw it stun three people. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it doesn't stun three people. Down here, I don't think I really looked around out here, but I don't think there's anything out here. Doesn't look like it. Well, we need to go back to Durante's office. There are still a couple of bone charms left for us to find, and it looks like there's still quite a bit of exploring left to do. Not sure what the heck is going on down there. There's a dude down there, and at one point, we saw somebody mixing up some stew down there. So maybe in the next episode we'll go visit them. I'm going to end this episode here. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, why don't you let me know? Let me a like or a comment. Sure would appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Sure hope you join me again in the next episode.